Hi, everyone. It's Brittany Bond and my amazingly gorgeous athletic power woman friend, Yael Hayes. Hi. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you on the podcast today. And just to give everyone a context, we I am back on Copanyang sitting in my community space, Remote Collective, and um, Afro, my dog, is laying on the couch across from us having a little slumber, and it's raining outside. <laughs> so if you hear any sounds, it's probably the pitter-patter of rain. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think it's just best if we just give a little can we give some context of who you are and how we met sure well um hi guys by the way mm -hmm. uh it was really really uh nice of Brittany to um invite me onto your podcast of I'm course actually gonna have your own I'm, podcast. I'm super excited about this episode <laughs> I'm not gonna lie um uh, the way we met was actually really funny um I had I was on um I was on a Samui, I think, at the time. And um, no, sorry, I just left Samui and I'd went to visit family in um, Israel. And uh, But I knew that I was going to come back to Kopangan because I was manifesting a job on the island because I really liked it here. Um, and then I saw this post of Vanilla Vanilla of a play party <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> And I was like, okay, yes, this sounds like fun. Like, it's nothing I've ever tried before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a new experience, but I'd always been someone that's very physical, very adventurous, very sexual in so many ways, but really uh, didn't feel like I could express that the way that I really wanted and the way that would have felt really freeing to me. Um because I had uh, come out of a relationship a couple of years ago that was that really broke me in that sense um and uh saw that saw the post saw the play party post and I just tasted and I was like hey what is this <laughs> can you tell me more about it and then she sent me all the info um and then uh I I had this you know this block of like oh should I should I not and then we found a way to to make it so I felt comfortable um coming and 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 being part of this and uh, this was the funniest thing so I got back to Kopangan and uh, within the first two weeks of being on the island I went to the play party oh, I thought it was like the first two days that, well the first two days actually even yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the first two days and that was the first time I met you in real yes. life was oh you walked God. in the door and I'm like okay you're all the, the people thing. who are helping us throw this play party so <laughs> welcome but yeah we, we immediately connected um mm. And I, I just, it, in within the first like fifteen minutes, because I remember I, I think I brought treats as well. You brought the best vegan desserts ever, <laughs> and like, I was like, who is paint this you a woman? Picture, guys, it was like oats, um, like oat, muff, like oat little pockets filled with this um, sweet. Um, oh my god what was it it was like a berry Everything. filling and then chocolate dipping sauce oh and like, was this I was like who lush? are you <laughs> what and fairy so tale land did you come from <laughs> <laughs> and so we so we connected pretty pretty quickly and we were like hey do we want to work together yes we totally want to work together yes i want to be in your team yes 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 yeah um also our we, birthdays are one day apart which yes. is helpful both scorpios did we find that out then I don't know. Like there was a lot happening that there was night. A lot happening that night. <laughs> I was like, welcome to the community. Oh my God, it was insane. So I would love to, so that was but your first was experience. We, and I want to ask about that. Like how, how was that for you? Anything you want to say, I can, we can talk more, but like, I guess maybe one, how was it to come into the community? And then how was it to experience the play part? Like what was your first experience? Cause maybe just tell people from your perspective yeah. how it was. Uh, one really nice thing was that, you know, I came in and you immediately, you know, took me into the community in a way. And I just had this feeling of coming home. Mm -hmm. um, of, of feeling very comfortable here feeling mm. very at ease here, like knowing that I'm surrounded, finally surrounded by like-minded people that are on the same, you know, frequency, uh, we're vibing, like 
we're speaking the same language, basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And um, and it just made me feel really, really good and really comfortable to to be myself and be free in the space and be free with the people. And I got super curious mm. about what it's going to be, and I was really excited because. Yeah, it was the first Kopangan thing ever, <laughs> the first event on this island. Um, and then uh, I really loved how we started out, you know, with this very clear circle. Um, everyone was there. We were like, what, 50 people? Yeah. 45 people? Yeah, 45 like to 50. 45 to 50 yeah. people, which is a lot, which is, is quite a bit. Um and there were a lot of different energies in the room at the beginning, <laughs> right? Yes, always. And always. And then, you know, you did the opening circle and you were like, yes, I'm Brittany Bond, you know, I've like told your story um, and how these play parties came to be and out of what they came to be. And and then everyone went around telling, you know, the, saying the names and like what brings them here. I don't even remember exactly what we said, but uh, or how they were feeling. Mm-hmm. That was it, yeah. Trying to get them in their bodies. Trying to get them into mm-hmm. their bodies, which, my God, woman, you do so well. Oh, thank and you. Um, yeah, absolutely. And um, and then you could really feel that shift where suddenly everyone's energy was the same, and we were all, we were now all part of this closed, safe container. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, we the anxiety dropped off like the not the anxiety because I wasn't anxious I was just like a little nervous Mm -hmm. but that dropped away I was like okay you know what I'm safe here Mm. I can Mm. do that I can do this Mm. um I can allow this and uh and then was something that I didn't actually expect um to be as great as it was was uh, about an hour and a half or an hour of facilitation uh where we you know did all do uh did all these connection games and um, trying to, you know, understand how to communicate boundaries, how to deal with rejection, how mm, to, mm. how how to reject gently, mm-hmm. but respectfully, but how to say no, um, how to say yes, how to say is this allowed, is this not allowed? So all of these little little facilitation games um, that would help us create this incredibly safe space and that is very much focused on taking responsibility for yourself, um, your boundaries, your needs, your wants, your desires, communicating mm-hmm. these aptly, uh, and then giving the other person a respectful um, space to decide whether it's a yes or a no for them mm-hmm. in each at each given time. So mm-hmm. for each decision that, for each question or demand we would put out, they would then have to ask themselves, hey, am I okay with this, yes or no, and then act upon it that way. And then it's back to us, and so on and so forth. So that was really, really nice, that facilitation. And then it came into open play. <laughs> and we were... <laughs> Do you want to tell people what that <laughs> means? <laughs> so, uh, so, guys, this is basically when, um, you know, you've done the facilitation and everyone at this point is already in somewhat of a saucy disposition. Feeling juicy. Feeling juicy. Uh, we are all, we've all kind of touched each other already a little bit. Like not, maybe not in an intimate way. Some people might have kissed a little bit. There might be some fondling of some extent. All consensual. All consensual, obviously always 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 but um yeah we all we all already in a little bit of an organic high is what mm-hmm. um, we like to call it and and everyone's vibing and so now the uh the, the facilitators at the time which were absolutely amazing they just said okay everyone's already you know in their little groups we're already moving intuitively we're already having fun open play mm-hmm. which means at that point the facilitation is officially over and people can start relating mm-hmm. um putting everything into into good use that we've just learned about boundaries and stuff into but, good use yes so, i mean yeah but no, <laughs> exactly <physically, right? laughs> but starting to play with each other starting to explore starting to um 
uh, go into you know different rooms so for those of you who've never been here we have the the, the remote collective is set up it was at the remote collective at the time mm-hmm. and it was set up in a way which is a community space that i have here on copa neon yes people if you've never don't know what that means oh yeah, yeah. sorry yeah uh, yes so it's a it's this beautiful beautiful community space but um now we are manifesting a a villa. villa. It's happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, which is going to be amazing. So, uh, but in each room, there was a different thing happening. So we had the kinky room and then you had the feeding each other sensually room. <laughs> and then there was like a little private room for people who weren't <laughs> as ready to, you know, be public yet or, or halfway public. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a sanctuary outside. Mm-hmm which um, was really helpful, you know, whenever you needed to process mm. something or when someone might have overstepped your boundaries or, you, or however, whatever you needed to go through. Or whatever if you just was coming up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And there would be angels sitting outside, you know, able to hold people's space or just talk them through it, tell them, hey, how was it going? Because mm-hmm. we, we were and are always all co-creating this experience together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's such a nice way to just really make sure that everyone feels cared for and we're all f- still feeling safe and, and heard and, and honoured in our experience, whatever that may be. And then there was a room, uh, the, the living room usually, in the middle <laughs> where we had uh, two very, very, uh, very um, sophisticated experts doing shibari, <laughs> which means tying people up Mm -hmm. in a very sensual way where you play with control Mm -hmm. power dynamics power dynamics and letting go of it Mm -hmm. in a safe in a safe environment yes so with a safe word with you know with boundaries saying what what are they allowed to do what are they not allowed to do Mm -hmm. um always knowing that the person who is tying you up will communicate your desires to other people Mm -hmm. the way you are saying them uh, Mm -hmm. So always making sure that you feel 100% safe. So that was also happening and actually did end up getting myself tied up. And that was a really interesting experience. Um, But so all of these different rooms, you know, people could explore and and play. The playground. The playground. Yeah. And uh, for me, that was huge. Um, I'd been to one um, party of the sort Mm -hmm. once. But that was um, that was in in Switzerland, <laughs> believe it or not, um, and it wasn't at all curated. Like, it, it, there was a guest list, and it was like an underground party, so you mm-hmm. had to be invited. It was called a pro love party, and so everyone could come the way they wanted to. Um, but there wasn't any type of opening circle. There wasn't any type of talk about consent or mm-hmm. any of that. You had to set your boundaries mm-hmm. and. And it was everyone's responsibility for themselves, but there wasn't a common understanding of this, these are the limits, mm-hmm. um, respect each other, blah, blah, blah. Um, it, it was an amazing experience by the end of it, but for me personally, to f- there were some instances there where I didn't feel safe or I felt like someone had overstepped my, my boundaries and mm-hmm. that was not okay. In this container, I felt completely safe and it allowed me to explore you know, some things that I had been curious about or that I didn't actually think I could do or that I would enjoy. So Mm -hmm. Shibari was definitely one of them where I was put into a situation where I could not but receive. Mm -hmm. I I wasn't able to reciprocate and it was clear that I wasn't able to reciprocate because I was tied up. And there were people, you know, going down on me and things happening. Things were happening. And I just had to receive. And I was like, okay, how learn. Did that, how did that feel in your body? Yeah, and it, that, that was it. That was, I think, one of the experiences that really stuck with me because it was such a relief mm, mm. to not to be in a position where it is clear that I don't have the control um, that I can't reciprocate. So that expectation that, sorry, I have to rephrase this. My assumption that someone would expect reciprocation from me mm-hmm. was void. And so all you had the invitation to do was receive pleasure. Yes, right? exactly. exactly. And how did it feel to and it allow just, yourself to receive? 
that was that was honestly transformative mm. because in all other aspects of life I'm always I, I always had to take responsibility mm. I was always the grown up one or the mm-hmm. stable one the strong one you know and I think a lot of us feel that way um, especially if you're coming if you're coming from you know different um, background uh, difficult um, familiar backgrounds and and you have to take on this role of the caretaker of everyone, mm-hmm. emotionally or otherwise. And and so you're always in this thing of like, oh, they won't like me if I don't give them something back, if I don't return mm-hmm. <laughs> return this this pleasure somehow. Um, and that was a recurring theme in my past relationship. And so being put into that situation was very, very transformative because I was like, no, no this is allowed mm-hmm. you are allowed to just sit there and receive and the people pleasure that, yeah pleasure and the people <laughs> that will 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 serve you in that way because mm-hmm. i really felt like they were doing they were giving me a gift mm-hmm. they are doing it out of their free will and they, also it's pleasurable for them and it's pleasurable f- because it's pleasurable for them yeah right they wouldn't do it otherwise mm-hmm. self-responsibility right again so uh, that that it, it was just such an eye-opening, amazing experience to allow this. Um, and it stuck with me. I really felt, after that experience, after that first play party, I really felt a lot more comfortable and made myself very aware to feel more comfortable in these situations. That, mm. yes, this guy's super cute. He's going down on me. I'm just going to lay there. <laughs> and enjoy. <laughs> and enjoy. <laughs> and he's going to stop when he's good and ready or, you know, when there has been a, a climax. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Amazing. he seems to be having a good time down there. Fuck yeah, let's, you know, <laughs> let's go. Um, so it just, it just, sex in general became, has become until now a lot more pleasurable that way. Mm. And seeing that it is such an important aspect of empowerment for for any of us not just women but for any of us Mm -hmm. to to be in that situation where you are comfortable to receive without having to give back anything that that's so empowering seeing that that is such an important aspect it really opened up not just my sexual life but generally my life where suddenly I would try and do this in all other aspects of life Mm. I would try and sit there and just receive a compliment or just receive a gift and say thank you very much and no I don't need to reciprocate thank you very much I receive this I integrate this give me a moment to really take this to heart thank you for that gift Mm. because you gave it to me selflessly without any agenda and if you had an agenda well that's your thing yeah I don't have to reciprocate and I, I'm okay to just receive. So it translated way past the play party, which I think maybe that's something that you might not always hear. Um, I mean, people tell me that it's changed their life yeah. and I hear yeah. a lot of stuff like the couple of days after, but yeah. it's nice to hear this. Because yeah. when I do it, I feel like I am of service to something in the universe like there's I want to back up a little bit I want to hear more of what you're saying but I want to just give people a a framework of what the play party is and why it's different Um, because a major thing that people maybe don't realize is that it's no penetration yes oh so I think this is really important to say very important is that and then (laughs) it took me like I've probably done, I've done these every month for a year now. And it took me like a couple parties for me to realize what that even meant. Cause people Mm -hmm. were like, does that mean no fingers? So basically it means no penile penetration. So no penis in the vagina or anal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everything else is up for consensual pleasure. (laughs) Uh, Toys are welcome, you know, fingering, oral, all these things. And then I have a lot of guys ask me, I think rightfully so, like, are men allowed to orgasm? <laughs> oh my like, God. Yes. yes. Like they really asked me this before. They're like, are, no. are we like, basically like our blowjobs allowed? And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, it's just, there's something that happens when it's full penetrative sex yeah. that I think, it, you know, it has, 
I just think inner, a lot of different energies yeah. are opened up. It has yeah. the opportunity for a lot deeper connection, but also trigger maybe a lot more trauma. Yes. And for me, intuitively, at the beginning, I was just like, this is this is the space I can hold right mm. now. This is the space yeah. I feel I want to hold. And now it feels... Yeah. I didn't really understand why I was doing it at the time, but now mm. it feels so clean. Like, it's like, we can just play. Yes, yeah. And how was it for you to experience that? I, to be honest, I was very grateful for, I was mm. very grateful for that, um, that little, you know. Um, boundary. Boundary, yeah. yeah. Um, simply because it is a very different thing when you do, when you do have, um, penile penetration on the table you know what I mean yeah I just feel like it's like uh, our, we are so programmed to go straight to that yeah exactly. and also just go straight to yeah. pleasuring the man yeah yeah and I think for me you know coming from that background where that was that was it that was sex mm -hmm. it was so nice to have that off the table and everyone knows so we don't mm -hmm. have to discuss it yeah there's no one dancing around it yeah, yeah there's no one dancing around the elephant in the room or whatever you know, there is no elephant in the yeah. room it's it's put out to the garden and it's having a mojito you know what i mean like <laughs> we, we're just we're just in here um it felt safe yeah it felt a lot mm. and and uh, we're just in here having fun with yeah. all the other way which by the way guys there's millions of other ways so many to, to receive and give pleasure mm -hmm. and it was so nice for me to experience those because that was what I had hadn't mm -hmm. until that point like to give you a picture you know for me the notion of sex was um literally uh me kind of lying underneath the guy who was kneeling at my at the height of my face and like having it stick in my mouth mm. and me pleasuring him that way and then we would go into sex immediately without him what? actually going down yeah without him going down I want to go slap he, those people <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh Jesus uh, I can tell these stories babe uh, but um I'll probably get angry will get out of that energy right <laughs> yeah, now okay. sure but um <laughs> But you know that was that was where I'd come from. Mm -hmm. That was the, the the idea of sex that I'd had. Mm. Um, and then you know, no wonder that I was. I had this one um, guy as well who who had given me unbelievable head, but that was the only thing that he'd wanted to do. Um, which, to be fair, I enjoyed very thoroughly. But I never had this this whole experience of everything that it could be, mm -hmm. and of. In the moment, you know, oh, I have an idea. I want to try this. And then feeling free enough and safe enough to mm -hmm. do it. I never had that before. And so suddenly having this, this you know, Christmas array of, <laughs> of sexual adventures. All at and, once, and everywhere. And experience yeah. all at once, everywhere around us. Um, with anyone who was uh, up feeling the vibe and yeah. up for it and... and was was like yeah it was like christmas to me it was like oh my god this is amazing <laughs> yeah and one thing i always say in the beginning as well is that watching is also participating yeah as long as we are honoring the experience of what's happening around us yeah exactly and so there's a lot of people that come and they're like this is so so beyond my programming yeah that i oh like you know they go into freeze mode or um, yep. um lots of different types of responses from yeah. uh, maybe trauma or just not being uh, having like the exposure to it yeah and yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm like just come be with us this is the tribe we're building is like yeah, just you know all of us being free to be our inner children yeah. which is yeah. like our sex our i always say our sexuality is our creative life force and yeah. and if we can access that and let go of all the programming on shame and blame and all these things and guilt yeah. then yeah. like you were saying it opens up so much more in every other aspect of our yeah. lives and yeah. Uh, I had a friend tell me the other day that uh, cl claiming our sexuality is the biggest rebellion that we can do, and especially Ooh, as, and I, I like yeah, I got that. goosebumps. I was yeah, like, I'm getting goosebumps right now. Because imagine like from a I religious saw, standpoint definitely. and a government Oof. standpoint, when you control someone's sexuality, oh my goodness, you control their reproductive, you control everything. their creative, everything, everything, yeah. And so when you, Wowzas. yeah, I was <laughs> like, wow, we are being rebellious. <laughs> We're being it's naughty. Definitely a nice little <laughs> bonus there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> not a bad thing. Uh, yeah, definitely a nice thought. But some, so, 
Another thing I want to say is that I interview every single person that comes and I actually say yeah. no to a lot of people. Like some people are like, how do, how do I know it's safe people? One, I feel like it's like the vibe, you know, like yeah. people, the vibe attracts the vibes yeah. for most of the last year. It's been just word of mouth. I didn't yeah, actually do, yeah. I, I had to grow into my own comfortableness about sharing about it publicly online. Wow. There you go. Cause like it started just in lockdown with our friends, just like having fun and messing yeah. around and stuff. And then slowly more and more people wanted to join and yeah. da, da, da. Mm -hmm. But for the whole first year, it was just friends of friends that wow. came. And the thing that I'm realizing is through the questions that I ask people in the interview process is that it's about connection. It's, yeah. you know, like the thing about taking penile penetration off the table yes. is that we are here for connecting to each other. Yeah. And I, you will understand this more than most people is the thing about feeling the energy of the other person yeah. and flowing with the energy. Yeah, 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 and very much so. Can you help me explain this to people? Yeah, okay. Um, uh, so for those of you who uh, might be interested, um, I'm like me and Brittany both, but we're super sensitive when it comes to energies. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing energy healings for a while, um, reading people's energies, feeling people's energies, and uh, funnily enough, it, it there is a very scientific basis a very clear scientific basis for vibration um mm -hmm. just go research string theory it'll tell you all you need to know but basically when we're saying we're not vibing with someone or we're not feeling someone's vibe that is very clearly anchored in science definitely and um vibration is is basically an expression of energy um and so you know in these play parties there, there is always, as I said in the beginning, like everyone's in their own energy, you know, vibing in their way. They're bringing whatever morning they had with them. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and then we close it all. And then it's a, a closed container. That's that's what you also put into the... Um, yeah, if you're late, you don't get in. I don't yeah, care if, if you paid for you your ticket. Exactly, yeah. Um, so everyone has to show up early and then we close the door and that's that. Mm -hmm. So you can leave at any point, just putting mm -hmm. this out yes. there. Yes, <laughs> that's important. We, we start together yeah. and we go in together, yeah. Yeah, and then we, we start to, you know, bring everyone into the, the same energy and, and build that, the same vibration with everyone so that we are all vibing, this, we're all vibing the, the, at the same frequency and we are able to connect a lot with a lot less resistance. Mm -hmm. um, not overstepping boundaries by any means, mm -hmm. but just we're more, we're more comfortable connecting mm -hmm. um, because we're all in the same space um, mentally and, and emotionally and physically. Um, and so when we're saying just feeling someone's energy, like these, this is when this becomes so precious where, you know, you will be in a situation, for example, where you are in the room that's maybe a little bit more secluded and you just kind of uh, messing around with someone mm -hmm. that you find attractive mm -hmm. and you're having this energy going and it's it's juicy and it's amazing oh my god yes and then someone comes into the room mm -hmm. and they're bringing their energy and so there's an energy shift mm -hmm. and now you have to check in with yourself hey something just happened am i okay with this do, or do I need to shield myself? How do I feel? How does this reflect on where I am? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what, uh, you know, if you're uncomfortable, say the person comes in and you're uncomfortable with this, with someone watching you, with this new energy coming into the room, even though they're not touching you, but they are watching you, right? Mm -hmm. What sh feeling of shame or what, what does that bring up, you know? And so it's a really nice um, way to a self reflect mm -hmm. and b enforce your boundaries. Mm -hmm. It's a ch it's an opportunity for you to say, hey, you know what? I'm actually not comfortable right now with you watching. Um, can you please move to another room? Yeah, or just vocalize whatever you want. Yeah, vocalize whatever you want. Or you can say, oh, you know what? That's intriguing. I actually, I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive, but I'm curious. Mm -hmm. I would like to see what happens if I invite that energy in. And then suddenly Ooh. there's three people on the bed. <laughs> and so it was funny um, that you should, men that you should you know, get into that subject because that's kind of what happened. Where Are you speaking I was, from experience? <laughs> yes. Well, I was on the bed and I was messing around with some guy. And then um, 
the scale came and I was like, okay, checking in, checking in. Mm-hmm. Actually, she seems kind of nice. Like, let's see what happens. I've never kissed a girl. I've never done anything with a girl. So that was really cool um, to, to have that first contact. And then she came onto the bed and, like, we started, like, touching each other. And that was really interesting for me because I'd never felt a woman's touch on my body. And, um, and then it happened that... Um, two uh, sorry one other person came in as well onto mm-hmm. the bed and we were like sure okay we're in this inviting energy right now let's bring him in as well so we were two guys and two girls on the bed and then another person came in and just stood there and watched and mm-hmm. not uh, what you need to understand guys is that it, when we are all in that space and because it's so highly curated you know again you said you don't accept everyone into these events people have to come for the right reasons in Mm -hmm. a way you know they want to grow they want to heart open yeah heart open and 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 honest and Mm -hmm. uh, if you're just looking to come to an orgy it's the wrong place for you you know Mm -hmm. so we were already in that space um that heart open space and just yeah like the watching wasn't um in a threatening way Mm -hmm. it was this type of admiration of just the beautiful picture of what was happening right so that's the energy we got from the guy and everyone checked in with themselves and yes it was fine and so okay let's keep going right Mm. and so we started um you know everyone started funneling everyone (laughs) basically and then um she went down on me the girl the girl went down this is the first time this happened like that was a a very yes that was a very I want to say it. something about this, about the um, fluid sexuality. Mm, yeah. I because like a lot of people, and then I want to hear the story, but yeah, a lot of people were asking, is this a safe space for someone who is non-heterosexual? Um, yeah. So, you know, that could mean everything else, basically. Yeah. But, and this yeah. is something we say in the beginning, we even have this part of our facilitated mm-hmm. part, is like, yeah. if you are a woman interested in, in, in other women, yes. step into the circle, and then everyone exactly. steps in. If yeah. you're a man, like on a scale of one to ten, yes. one being like, I don't want anyone to be able to whatever yeah. basically like because i'm just not ready for that yeah yeah not so open to it, yeah. slowly slowly have the men step in if they're interested in, in maybe mm-hmm. exploring with other men and you would be surprised at how many people are like open yeah. to it at yeah. least yeah. and maybe they have never had it's the first time that they've had a safe container yes. to explore anything like this and yes. have it be like i'm just exploring it could mean nothing yeah. or it could mean everything and yeah and i think um so we i would love to actually speak about the facility Mm -hmm. um in a minute i want to hear your story yeah no worries no it's just one more uh, thing that touches on that is like it's so important to mention that this is something that we say at the beginning Mm -hmm. right where hey guys what happens at the play party stays at the play party please don't go around mentioning names don't Mm -hmm. talk about other people confidential yeah it stays here um and that's super important because you know people know that whatever's going to be in this night it will stay here. They don't have to worry about, you know, the image or, mm-hmm. or the parents finding out online over a Facebook post or whatever. So it that, again, creates safety. So we're really trying to, to do this in a way. Yeah, no photos. Which, no which photos. Which is funny because no also phone. people are always like, how do you mark? How do people? And I'm how like, all mark? word yeah. of mouth, guys. Yeah. It's yeah. If you're doing something right, people hear about it. Yeah, and they'll want to come. Yeah. And they, they always have. Um But yeah, in that scenario, so she went down to me and she gave me a ridiculous orgasm. Like, guys, amazing. That was cuckoo. (laughs) Better than literally pretty much any other. Amazing. Um, Which I was like, oh my God, I have been depriving myself of this? What the (laughs) fuck? (laughs) That was amazing. And so I got a little bit of experimental. I was like, well, I have never gone down on a girl before. That could be fun. I want to see if I can do that. So I went down on her and I actually made a come. Oh, that's amazing. I was like, oh my God, this is actually feel? fun. Aww. It was fun. It was playful. And it wasn't in a way where like, okay, yeah, now you're a lesbian mm-hmm. or whatever. It, it, yeah, I how did you feel? I just felt that we were all having fun with each other mm-hmm. in a very free and playful way that didn't, that didn't require me to put a label on myself. Mm-hmm. And 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 also that I wouldn't be judged for. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's this beautiful guys. It's this beautiful space where you really can just allow yourself to experience everything uh, without without any type of fear. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and even when you're leaving the play party the next day, um, early in the morning or, or even the, the day after that, you know, when you're just going through the rest of your, your day after that. Um, the integration, yeah. The integration is 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 so monumental. When you're really starting to to process what happened, you'll see how you're like, oh, I I I learned something new about myself. I mm. I because you allowed it and because you were part of co-creating this energy that was so beautiful. Um, you or I found. Uh, or owning my experience, I found that I loved myself more. Aww. You know what I mean? Out of out of that experience, because I'd allowed it, because I'd participated, because mm-hmm. I had stayed true and honest about my boundaries mm-hmm. and had given the others in that way um, a safe space as well mm-hmm. because they knew that I would say no if it was too much. Mm-hmm. So they were able to freely play until that might or might not be the case. Mm-hmm. So that's a big thing as well. That's why self-responsibility is such a big aspect. And so, yeah, I, I really found myself like, hey, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm proud of I'm proud of me. Mm. And that in itself, I think, especially when it comes to sexuality, is something that not a lot of people can honestly say. Yeah, and being in your power, especially yeah. as a woman. Especially as a woman. So that was, that was and it still is to this day, um, a huge development for me and that really got me hooked in a mm. way where I was like I've experienced this let's go I'm ready to open up fully I'm ready to experience everything my sexuality and body has to offer um, I want to experience feeling empowered with my boundaries and um, and that's when um, we kind of started talking about like a little bit of a deeper collaboration and the first time I helped you with administration. Uh, the second time, the second play party, I helped you with administration. And then we figured out that we're both <laughs> five one manifesting generators and that details are not our thing. I just don't like them. <laughs> I don't want to go like play. Them. Yeah, it's <laughs> no fun. But um, then um, we settled on actually helping with facilitation. Yeah, I love it that you facilitate with me. Uh, that was totally my thing. Girl, and you were on fire. <laughs> I'm so excited for this next one. Oh, I'm so excited. I have the games ready. Yes. I've been thinking about them all fucking month ever since you put the Amazing. post up. It's like, then and then. I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, so, yeah, since then I've been helping with the facilitation and um, being on the, f- the flip side of it, being the facilitator, adds another dimension to it, another mm-hmm. perspective um, we're, you know, not just kind of participating in some of the games, but also being able to watch mm-hmm. as the energy builds That's and my the little part. bonds build yeah, and the little yeah, and yeah. people starting to be a little more adventurous in their touch. And like, mm-hmm. it's so delicious to watch you guys. It's like making art. Oh I, I call it like good facilitating. It's like making yeah. art. You're making a masterpiece. Like Seriously. Yeah. Um, so I've been highly enjoying that. And oh, yeah, and now amazing. we're just totally in it. Yeah, you're doing amazing. You're rocking it. I want to talk to people more about the community-led experience of it. Yeah. About the so in the beginning you were talking about angels, and I think some people yeah. maybe don't know what that means. Right. So in a play party, an angel is someone who's on the team who's co-creating the safe space, like leading on it. Yes. Sometimes I've experimented with having us wear bracelets, but it just it it's basically work. yeah, it's like <laughs> stuff starts falling off, oh like you know, people start losing. Anyway, so we have a part of the the experience, whether it's here at the collective, the remote collective, or if it's in a villa, where we have a we call it a sanctuary safe space. Yes. And this is a space where I say in the beginning, this is a space where please, if you start playing with someone and you start vibing, that's great, but take it inside Um, because we've had it where like, and then so basically someone from the team, that an angel or a volunteer will be there and they will be there to hold space, Mm -hmm. to listen, to just talk to whoever and if nothing else, it's a silent, safe space and they will be there pouring tea for you. So yeah. it's like if you mm-hmm. just need a break, if you need to talk to someone about what's coming up. I say in the beginning, if this is a party where things are supposed to come up, so then you can let go of programming, mm-hmm. let go of limiting beliefs. Yes. Like if you're getting to the point where you don't have anything come up, that's great also. But if you have stuff coming up, that's a good thing. And yeah. we're here yeah, as a community. Cool, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also I invite everyone who comes 
if you're out in the sanctuary tea room space and someone sit down sits down next to you, ask yeah. them. So not even people on the team, just like other people who are coming together or, you know, participants together, yeah. ask each other, how is your experience going? Because yeah. it's one big experiment we're all doing mm-hmm. together. Yeah. And I love seeing people talking and then they start vibing and then maybe they start making out and then, and then they take it inside. Yes. <laughs> Because I've had a couple times where a couple different parties where I, I like forget to say in the beginning about, you know, that that's a safe space because mm-hmm. it can be a little overwhelming for someone if they really need a break. And yeah. then someone is just like going for it in the safe in space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like one of the times I'm not going to mention any names, okay. but someone got very saucy and they started like spraying whipped cream on themselves <gasps> oh and God. got on the table where like it's like this low table where we have the tea room and she's just like on the table with whipped cream and I'm just like oh I forgot to say in the beginning no we don't do that in the safe room someone lick that off of her but inside (laughs) yeah Oh my yeah. God. I, sometimes I'm like, when we talk about these things, I'm like, our lives are a movie. Like yeah, someone's going to make a movie about this. It, they have to. I swear. That's just, just this podcast alone could be a script. <laughs> I swear to God. Um, no, I yeah, think. Do you want to add anything? I just wanted to say that to people and then I would love to hear what you think about no, that. No, yeah. I think, I think that's, that's such a nice point, you know, that we, um, and I think that's a really, really big part of why these uh, specific play parties, Vanilla Vanilla, are so um, set themselves so far apart from any other experience that you might have mm. is that safe space is is the understanding that hey this is a space where we will hit some type of you know at least some type of programming some type of wall some type of anxiety so something will probably come up and it's a good thing and it's a good thing that's mm. what we're here for we and have you're not the alone. safe space yeah. you're not alone the idea is to to bring this stuff up you mm-hmm. know that that's really nice to me and it's something that i've um experienced uh, the last couple of play parties you know that that i would sit outside and kind of catch a breather from yeah. <laughs> everything that was going inside you know all the juicy stuff <laughs> all the juicy stuff um and i would sit outside and i had a cup of tea and i would check in with some people and then i would really we took through it and they would all the programming would come up Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know I was like oh my god and I wasn't comfortable with that but then I was able to let it go blah 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 like all the programming coming up um and then and then seeing them re-engage and actually go back in Mm. and then I would go back in after a while right and coming back in and seeing them kind of having this new confidence and going for mm, a little mm. more, you know, being a little more adventurous, a little more explorative. And that was something that I really, that's something that I really, I think that's sort of one of the biggest values here, mm. that within this closed container and in this night, during this night, um, you can work through the programming and then you can retest your boundaries or you can retest Amazing. retest it yeah, you know? yeah. um and and f- feel heard in your in in your maybe it was pain or trauma or any of that feel heard in that maybe for the very first time in your life mm-hmm. that's what it was for me uh, at the very first time when i was here and and say okay you know what yes i'm here this is safe these people are genuinely interested in my experience and they listened to me and they might have care me. yeah we they care cared. about yeah, yeah. yeah. They really we really do care and they might have you we might have given you some perspective some some new idea to to address something maybe something a, a step to try out and then you go inside and you feel safe enough to try it and mm-hmm. you actually work that way you work through the trauma and yeah. a lot of people can then leave that here mm-hmm. well because they say trauma is when we hit an overwhelm point yes and we are alone yes. and then it gets like this energy that gets stuck, stuck. in us yeah. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. the reason why people have unhealthy like we all have had mm-hmm. maybe some unhealthy situations unhealthy mm-hmm. dynamics with people is because subconsciously we're wanting to bring this up again so then we can have yeah. a work through point where yeah. we can work through it yeah. And then I feel like we can work through these limiting beliefs or this trauma or whatever you want to call it in a painful way. We can have like dysfunctional relationships or 
we're in the fucking new paradigm. We can work through this with pleasure. Exactly. Like, yeah. Let's bring this up and then yeah. and then be held in a safe container yes. and then work through it and then go have some fun. Have some you know? fun. Exactly. Go play. dance it off. Go play. Yes. Go run around. Mm-hmm. And yeah, there's so much I could say about all of that. Oh, I want to tell people why it's called Vanilla Vanilla because people ask me this all the time. And mm. basically, Perfect. it was just kind of a joke where I was trying to figure it out because there's no penetration. And yeah. then it, it's... It's just more of like it's soft, a soft, <laughs> soft sex party. But it's like vanilla. I don't know. It's vanilla. It's yeah. a vanilla party. Yeah. Yeah. No. But I feel like I feel like it fits. It fits perfectly. I think it fits perfectly, and it's. I think it's a name that, at least for me, it put me at ease. Actually. Oh really? Yeah. Because if it's vanilla, like it can't be. It's not hardcore. Know, it's not gonna go crazy. You know, I yeah, don't yeah. have to. I don't have to worry. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly why I, I also said it. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, and for me, what was really interesting as well, um, in later, later play parties, um, so we actually started to do, um, I remember when, when like one or two play parties, um, the last one or two play parties, we started to actually do active energy work during the play party. Oh yeah. You and I were in the background just oh my God. <laughs> vibing, cleaning the energy of everyone. Cleaning energy of people. And, and Maha was bringing her sound bowls. We had sound healing. We were putting sound healing bowls on, on people while, people. <laughs> while they're making out with each <laughs> other. Was crazy. I was having the best time. It was amazing. It was amazing to, to watch and it was amazing to heal and, and to, to feel it. Like the, cl- the energy was so clean. Yes. Yeah, this, yeah. this is one thing I say in the beginning it's like because there's no there's this climaxing yes but mm-hmm. there's no like something about no penile penetration it feels the energy in the in the space gets building 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 yeah and then it I call it organic ecstasy. Uh, yeah, that was it. Organic ecstasy. Yeah, yeah organic it's basically high. like you're on you're on ecstasy, like the drug, yeah, but absolutely. there's you're completely sober, and yeah. there's no alcohol at the events, yeah. no and drugs. S- no drugs, no alcohol, and so it's just like, and then just. To, like you okay, tell people how you feel like it's like I, I, when I'm like at the end of it I'm oh just God. like I can't sleep sometimes because I'm just I'm vibing so, so high I feel high yeah so I high. Feel high yeah it's this um it's really this feeling of complete um complete empowerment and just being in your joy mm. so you know as kids for example like or as babies like you will stick your hand in some on somebody's bum and you were like it does you don't have that limit Mm -hmm. you know um and obviously when we grow up you'd probably ask for consent (laughs) you should please but um but because we you know we set up the rules for consent and all of that stuff you can revert back to that playful state Mm -hmm. and you can just live in that joy and that joy literally just makes you high yeah oh my god in an insane on an insane level to give ourselves full permission to Mm. in to receive pleasure yeah yeah and to embody our you know our our wants yeah and our full desires our sexuality everything i want to talk about the sacred no which is something so like like the first couple of play parties i was i was trying to figure out you know i've done a lot of um I don't know, facilitator training, Mm. uh, trauma awareness training, Mm -hmm. tantra immersions I've gone to, and just like shadow work, gathered a lot of different tools. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out the best way to get people to feel safe saying no while also keeping the vibe of like a party where we're still vibing. And so one thing, one thing I encourage is to break all of the programming around women initiating Oh, I like it. Um, and this is something I say in the beginning. I'm like, if you're a woman who's used to men, especially coming to you, mm-hmm. why don't you flip it and go up to someone? And I'm yeah. like, it honestly, in my play parties was the first time I'd ever been rejected by a man. Multiple wow. times. I mean, um, throughout all the play parties, I've been rejected wow. multiple times. And it's the first time I've ever been rejected in my life sexually. Wow. And it was like so nice to feel like I was like yeah. okay wow this is how men feel all this the time you know feel, yeah and then for me I was just trying to figure out like okay how do we get people to feel safe to say no to each other yeah and so I I, I don't know if this is a term I found somewhere else but I call it sacred no where you do the hand prayer so basically you just put your hands in the shape of like you're praying your palms together yeah your palms together 
This, they do this in ecstatic dance a lot yeah. as well. Yeah. And so when you don't need to talk and, yeah. and so if someone comes up to you and they start touching you, you can just do the sacred no. And, but also this is why I say about reading energy is, you know, you don't need to even get to a point where you don't even need to do that or verbalize. You mm -hmm. just look at someone and you can kind of just you shake your head or, you know, yeah, you just like signal. Yeah. Signal. Mm -hmm. And how is that for you to be able to feel safe enough to say no? Um, so I think it, you know, a big, big part of why I feel safe still at play parties, obviously, um, but but especially in that first one, was because, you know, at the beginning, um, you were signposting. So you were saying, hey, guys, you know, if uh, and during the facilitation as well, if you don't want something or if you feel uncomfortable, do the sacred no, and that will be that will be an immediate that will put an immediate stop to whatever full advance stop. you're yeah full stop immediately to whatever advance is happening right now that you are not okay with and the other person you you will have to accept that so to the other person you would say yeah you you will have to to back off immediately respect that and also and you can do it with a smile both yes. directions and i think um the most beautiful thing that you know we i really try to then iterate in in uh, reiterate when we were doing when i was doing the facilitations mm -hmm. um ever since is this is not just for you that is doing the rejection right that is saying the sacred no for the other person you could view it as a hey thank you for honoring your boundaries mm -hmm. and 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 giving me a clear no so I don't need to, you know, doubt or, mm -hmm. or ask any... They can be in like their power knowing that if it's a yes, it's a full yes. Yes, if it's a yes, it's a full yes and they don't need to worry that they're overstepping any boundaries, mm -hmm. that there's going to be some bad energy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so just having that thought of thank you for honouring your boundaries and, and in this way creating clarity and in this way creating co-creating that safe space. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really important aspect of it where it's not just, hey, oh, God, I'm being rejected and I'll have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also just like, oh, hey, I feel safe with your rejection because I know you are honoring your boundaries mm. and that might not even have anything to do with me. Mm. It might, yes, have uh, something mm -hmm. to do with you just not vibing with me and that's fine. But, um, yeah, just honoring your boundaries and... And that also opens then the door for that person to feel safe to do the same, to to reject others in that same respectful way, and know that they now they now appreciate that you are honoring your boundaries now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's all of this. All of this is is part of why this is such a transformational and magical experience, and why personally I believe um, everyone should come to at least one. Yeah, just to experience just, it. Yeah. And I remember one guy asking very honestly, and um, I thought it was really nice that he did. Well, he was like, well, what if the girl says maybe? Mm. And w <laughs> you and I both were like, if it's not 100% fuck, fuck, yes, fuck yes, it's, it's a, a no. no. Yeah. This is like, <laughs> I want this on a t-shirt. I do like, want this on a t-shirt. Oh, my God. Because this, this goes back to the abundance yeah. of opportunities to mm. receive pleasure from people that you want to receive pleasure from. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like we... I think there's this mentality in the world that it's like, well, is anyone going to like me? Or like, especially for men, I yeah. understand, you yeah. know, they, they do a lot of the initiating a lot of yeah. times and it can be very vulnerable. Yeah. But in these parties, I always say in the beginning, there's at least one person here that you're probably going to vibe with, if not 10, you yeah. know, yeah. out of 50 people, there's yeah. at least one or two. That, yeah. Or if nothing else, you can just be in the energy of yeah. this amazingly sex positive yeah. experience. Yeah. Um, but I think it's really important for, I had one girl tell me like that she just chose to say no the whole party because she was really working on her boundaries. Wow. And so That's she just big. witnessed everything and was, you know, honoring the energy and anytime someone wanted to come and engage, she just politely said no. Yeah. And for her, she was like, it was so, so empowering, empowering for yeah. her yeah. because she oh, was totally in that. the past had, you know, had problems with to sake like honoring yeah. her body honoring you know body. Yeah. and this is some of the facilitation games that we do in the yes. beginning is yeah. we we don't have people actually touch each other but we say like um we have like one of the games is like can i touch your hair and then the person has to say like yes 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 even if their body says no they mm -hmm. s and then they flip it where the person's like can i touch your hair and, but the whole time you have to say no 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 no, yeah. no. 
And again, they don't actually do the thing, but it's just to check in with your body. Yes, and feeling the discrepancy. Yeah, because there's so many there's so many of us I think that have been so programmed, at least for especially women to like go with the flow. Yeah, that we are so numb to what our body actually yeah. wants. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, wow, if yeah. you're so numb, then how are you going to even enjoy the pleasure yeah. when, the, when the pleasure is there? And, and how are you going to know if you're safe enough to enjoy it? So this is like yeah, all that big one. programming that we, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's so Lai, much. Yeah. I feel like I could like write a book about this stuff. I uh, probably well, will one day. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just going <laughs> to say that is definitely grounds for a yeah. good little book. But I think that's very, that's very um, important for sure, you know, that you know by 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 just having even even just having the opportunity to be in this energy and and let these feelings come up and let this programming come up and then mm-hmm. you know like that girl experience what it feels like to actually set a boundary for once mm-hmm. and say even if your body wants to say yes and you're like oh yeah he's cute whatever mm-hmm. like even then you know to say no because you got to think about something as well. You know, this is what it was for me where, you know, you you might come into a situation or you might see a guy, right? And you're like, oh, my God, he is fine. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fine. But he wouldn't be interested in me. Like, the guy of that, a guy of that level, that mm-hmm. caliber, that beauty, whatever, wouldn't be interested in me, right? You're not saying this consciously. You're not, you wouldn't say it out loud, but... It's a subconscious, it's mm, a thing, mm. you know, that we don't, many of us don't feel good enough mm. for the guy of our dreams. Mm. And, um, and so just coming to this space and being confronted possibly with a guy like this, you know, that you find absolutely hot and steamy and dreamy, and then he actually comes onto you and you're already coming into this space of disbelief. Like, oh my God, why is he picking me? Oh my God, I can't believe it, you know? <laughs> and then and then putting yourself into a situation where you confidently say no to a mm. guy like that mm. is extremely empowering, mm-hmm. you know? Because you are essentially saying with that, you know what? Yes, you're hot and steamy and dreamy. And yes, I want to do all the things with you. But your relationship with your body is my, more yeah. important than yeah. whatever's in front of you. Yeah. And that's something I always say in the beginning is that everyone's like, when they tell me about the party afterwards and they're like, they always want to come tell me like, oh, Brittany, this thing yeah, happened. I and I love hearing all the stories. <laughs> People do that like I, well. Yeah, yeah. They're so good. Because so like, cute. it's so fun, you know, so and to nice. celebrate it together. Oh, okay, yeah. They're so excited. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I, at the beginning, I'm always like, you know, if, when people come and talk to me about it after, they're like, this thing, I had the connection and this thing happened and da, da, da. And, but what I always say is like, the, the party does not start when you, you know, first connect with someone. The party starts like right now with yes. what's happening in your body because yes. the goal is to come into complete union with ourselves mm, first. Yes. So whatever exactly. we need to work out, all these limiting beliefs yeah. or whatever, whatever, those are these are all external people in the community who yeah. are helping us create a safe space for yeah. us to come in union with ourselves. And that experience starts from when you sign up for the party, from mm-hmm. when you're getting ready, from when mm-hmm. you're coming in, from when you're seeing people and all the things that it brings up. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. such a beautiful experience to honor that and whatever you need in that moment. And that, that those needs can change and you're allowed to speak up at yeah. any moment. It's a yes, now it's a no. Okay, maybe now it's a yes. But whatever it is, it's a fuck yes or it's or a no. It's a no. Yeah. And just keep honoring that and following your body. And oh, I just want to go around like hugging everyone. I'm like, you guys are doing great. You're yeah, just doing I know. great. It's amazing. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, one of the beautiful things is um, like when when you're starting out and it's your first party, you're super nervous and you're like, mm. you're still totally nervous, the excited. I was like yeah. nervous, excited, but also just, I remember the very first party we were at, um, I think half of the room when we went through the circle was like, I'm nervous and I'm a bit tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, well, there's snacks, guys, and there's coffee, like go, yeah, go get up. <laughs> Um, they got into it. <laughs> they got into the snacks for sure. But um, but everyone, you know, comes in with this with this anxious, like slightly nervous, yeah. maybe a little anxious, even sometimes, um, energy. And and 
your many of us um and I speak from experience I mean this was me as well are used to viewing a relationship as something that can complete you mm. so you are coming into a relationship from a place of need mm-hmm. um for example you know you're unhappy in your lives or you're filling um, a hole you're filling a hole with mm. another person where this person has their own holes to fill yeah yeah i mean physically and many <laughs> all the things <laughs> all all the holes you know <laughs> <laughs> But they have their own they have their own shit to deal with. Yeah, and yeah. so if we are putting our shit on them as well, that is a very unfair and 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 um dysfunctional uh, unrealistic yeah, okay, expectation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know. Um they don't have that power. You are giving off some of your power mm. and putting it on them by becoming dependent on them to heal you. Mm-hmm. And that is why that is a nice shift that I've seen with some people that have then after a while have come to a couple of play parties where because your level of knowing yourself mm. and your level of self love therefore always grows after every party a little bit, I see these subtle shifts in people where they're starting to come in with less of a, a sense of need and more of I'm holding myself and I'm offering the overflow for sharing. Oh, that's so amazing. You know what I mean? And you can really see how the somewhat also the, the difference sometimes in these levels where the newbies come in and they're mm-hmm. in that need space oftentimes still, mm-hmm. um, which a lot of it is already addressed in the facilitation, which is really nice, but you still have that programming. It's not going to mm-hmm. go away just from one hour of facilitation or two or an hour and a half. Um, but you can see that discrepancy where the people that have come to a couple, they are coming from a place of offering and they are... It's abundance. And it's abundance, yeah. And they and you can really see how differently they start to enjoy themselves now. Mm. And to enjoy each other mm. in that way where... This is the tribe we're building. This is the tribe that we're building where, you know, they, they can be so free and so generous as well when mm. s- when they feel, okay, this is a person that's really nervous and anxious. It, uh, c- if, if it's consensual, how do I gently lead them into their personal state of offering, mm. their personal freedom? How can I be generous that way? Because I'm holy myself. Now I can offer that joy. I can offer that to someone else. And more and more of that energy, even throughout the night, that the level of offering builds. Yeah. But uh, especially over a couple of play parties, and this is why I would actually encourage people to come to a few mm-hmm. um, or try different ones even. But although I do think this one's the best, but, you know, <laughs> just saying. But, um, but try, try to come to a few of them um to really to really experience that and to feel what it feels like to then come from the other side mm-hmm. um and starting to really understand what it actually feels like to be whole and mm-hmm. to take care of your happiness and and take responsibility for your desires and for your wants and for your needs and for your boundaries and have that power right to do that um, and not give it off or, or put it on someone else. Yeah, to reclaim it. Yeah, for to reclaim yeah. it. And then how that literally not just translates in your sexual lives, but in every part every of your way. life. Oh my God, yes. And this, this is something I want to share uh, briefly is that the reason why I started these is because, I mean, I don't say this at every single party, but I think it's important to say in the podcast here is that I got married at 18, Jesus you know, Christ. as a virgin. Oh I was a God. fucking virgin. Fuck. <laughs> this, this should be in a book somewhere. Yeah, this, is, this is probably, yeah, this is going to be in my book. Oh, Grimm's um, Tale. But yeah, I, I grew up in a very sexually suppressed yeah. culture and was al- also sexually molested by a neighbor. Jesus I was Christ. over-sexualized by my father. Like, lots of really shady stuff. Oof. And... After, com- but for me, I don't even like think about that stuff anymore. I've already processed it. I've yeah. already let it through. Yeah, okay. But I share it so that people know where I've come from. Mm. Like I was married for six years. So I got out of my marriage at 24. Oh my I'd only slept with one person my whole life. Oh my God. And 
did, maybe had had like two orgasms my whole i don't know like it, not that in many six years yes okay babe. to be fair i had four and that was it and but yeah half. but we had sex all the time and it was just like i'm like Jesus looking Christ. back i'm like what were we even doing yeah, or like exactly. how was what know, was right? how was that sex? how was that sex <laughs> yes <laughs> like where was the pleasure i know and then oh the God. sexual journey empowerment journey that i have gone on and something I realized too, bringing these to Europe and doing a, one of the vanilla vanilla play parties there was I really am creating the space that I needed in order to feel safe to come into my yeah. own sex. And then just like bringing every, bringing the tribe along with yeah. me. Like, yeah. okay, I'm doing this for myself, but also for all of you because we're doing it together. It's yeah. more fun together. Yeah. And fun then people yeah. to play with. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is great. That'd be fun. <laughs> Because, like, a lot of people were asking me, like, oh, Brittany, why don't you do more, like, basically, like, for the ones who have come to some of the parties, like, why don't we do penetration events? And I'm like, maybe in the future, but I'm still, I'm having so much fun here. Uh, yeah. I think I think what I'll grow into is retreats, but the play parties, but, like, have more of a day yeah. for integration and a day for yeah. this. And, and you know, I mean, we've had the instances where, you know, a couple of people, they would really get steamy <laughs> and they would take it outside of the play yeah party, i'm like you can literally take it anywhere else go to the woods whatever <laughs> whatever you need to um, do go to one person's house have your little shindig mm -hmm. you know and then you can rejoin mm -hmm. uh, but that energy of of the actual penetration will stay outside of the mm -hmm. party um, so we've had a couple of people do that. I've noticed a couple of people leaving and then subtly coming back. That's looking, great. I honor all of it. Yeah, looking very happy. In their um, afterglow, as long as it was pleasurable and consensual. Exactly. I right. support all of that. Um, yeah, but it's, I think, you know, th there is a lot of value in, in having that as a boundary. Mm -hmm. um, so that especially women can feel safe because you know essentially we are the ones being penetrated yeah <laughs> Do you know what i mean yeah and i think this is something that i've i've really thought about a lot i mean organizing these because people ask me all the time like why don't we do that why don't mm -hmm. it's so funny to me people who have never come to one before but maybe they've gone to yeah. other sex parties or play yeah, parties yeah. or some and where there has been penetration and they're just like Brittany, i really don't get it like why don't and then i'm like just come to one just, just come it. and at yeah. the end they're like oh sense, okay yeah. i get it because yeah. you can wake up the next morning in complete afterglow yeah and just be in your power yeah, yeah and i mean it's the whole uh, especially you know uh, there's sometimes you know when it comes to to penetration as well um many well, some women at least that i know um have had trauma you know of partners that would uh, ask for sex without a condom or that mm, would take the mm. condom off during sex and then re-penetrate or like all of these things that really are not okay not okay absolutely crossing a line um but the women would not feel safe enough or empowered enough to put that boundary down mm. and speak up for what they need and speak up for what they need um and so you are taking that dynamic completely off the table and nobody has to worry about getting pregnant, <laughs> mm. which, you know, is a thing. Yeah. Uh, ish, like that's the natural progression yes. of yes, Alex yes. Lex. Um, and, and also, I think it's really nice for men mm. to witness women feeling safe. Okay, so this is the whole thing. Like, the amount of women pleasure happening at these parties. Yes. Like, I just want to, like, scream with happiness. Yes. Like, the amount of yes. women who are just, like, oh my God. so in their bodies. <laughs> so, yes. And then you can see that the men are also in their masculine. Because yeah, they're, like, extremely. Like, they're feeling, like, yeah, I did that. Yeah. And we're, like, yes, thank you. Yeah. And pretty much, and so, honestly, a lot more than, a lot more than, uh, than, than if there was penetration on the table. Yeah, why do you think that is? I th honestly think because when you have penetration, it's it's the power dynamics very clear. The woman is lying down, or you know, it's it's she's she's receiving, she's letting the man come in. So the dynamic of it is very very clear. The man is the guy that does the the man is the guy that does the work. You know, he he's in power. He is coming mm -hmm. in and out. You know. Um, and the woman has to receive. That's that's a natural, in quotes, job, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's happening there. But when you're taking this away, 
because because the men are and I honestly feel that way I think also sometimes feel uh, because the men also sometimes feel very limited in I have to play this role I'm I have to be the the you know the powerful one the one that that yeah, I think it's job, a lot you know? of porn programming. It's a lot of porn. I don't porn even know if the yet. men really want to be doing this. Exactly. I think they're just like, well, this is what's expected of this me. This is exactly. And then taking that off the table and saying, hey, look, you can pleasure each other in a myriad of other ways. Literally millions of ways. <laughs> Literally millions of ways. And there's so much more to the human body, you know, mm. somehow mm. A, a guy finding out that if a girl nibbles his earlobe or if mm. a girl, I don't know, <laughs> kisses uh, his, uh, the the pit of his knee, <laughs> what about, Everything. Like, he, he gets kind of high off of it. Um, so just by taking penetration off the table, you're taking that dynamic, I think, off the table or mm. what's expected of a guy in stereotypical terms. And so they feel, I think, a lot more empowered to to play as well, and to we're see all just little kids what, that want to play, and to see what it is like for women mm. to fully blossom and enjoy and be playful and 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 know that they're not expecting of the man to then buckle down and do the work. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was reading somewhere recently that. All women are multi-orgasmic. Mm -hmm. But yep. the thing is, is that we need to feel safe. Yes. And we need to feel that it's okay to receive pleasure. Yeah, yeah. And I think when the penetration stuff happens, <laughs> stuff happens. I feel, I feel like when there is yeah. penetration involved, it needs to be a really safe container for a woman to... Yeah. Because otherwise it's like, okay, guy's going down on you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to get to orgasm because he wants to yeah. penetrate. And then and he's... Got, like, it's basically like going yeah, to the male... The male orgasm yeah, is exactly. the goal. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's, that's a big, big thing where, you know, when... As soon as there is... Um, uh, there is the option of penetration you are immediately switching into that reproductive mindset mm -hmm. you know what i mean we're like okay um uh, we uh, the idea of this is that there will be a baby at the end mm -hmm. <laughs> biologically speaking or it's like right? a linear we have a goal we must reach the goal yes we must reach goal this is what's you know programming from 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 porn but also programming from movies you know mm -hmm. building a family we're mm -hmm. having that you know this is what happens right um and and i think that's that's always a little bit of you know of of an, an a, a touchy point a, a point where a lot of women would feel quite unsafe to do this with a guy they'd literally met an hour ago mm -hmm. you know because you mean to allow themselves to, to receive allow themselves to receive pleasure you know, receive yeah. pleasure by penetration with a guy they just met yeah i mean that blows my mind that people do that but that's also I mean, their, yeah, that's yeah, something else, that's something else but yeah. you know it's so i think just that that is a and to be honest that's why i'm i'm actually hoping that you're not going to I don't that really, no, I don't want into to. Vanilla because that is a really big factor of of um, of, of why it feels, it feels so like the woman. secret ingredient. It is, and I really, I really, truly, honestly think it is because um, if if we if you as a woman would walk away from a party like this and someone would have had penetrated you, even if it felt amazing, you have no idea. If you are ever going to see that person again, mm -hmm. you might not even have connected because phones just stay out of the way in these mm -hmm. parties. Nobody looks at their phone. It's really nuts. Mm -hmm. Not even at the sanctuary space. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you have z you didn't know them. You have no idea what their family are like. You have no idea who this person is. We do the facilitation and everyone gets vibey, but you know, you might not even know the name of the person anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll ask hopefully, but so to walk away from a party like that having been penetrated not knowing anything about it with the possibility of having gotten pregnant even if you use the condom condoms break mm -hmm. you just don't know and so that that for me would make me feel very very unsafe 
very insecure, very unsafe. So this is why these parties are so amazing. Yeah, because like exactly. I think for me, at least it was one of the first times I ever felt safe really embodying yeah. my sexuality. Yeah, exactly. And and it, so I think it's it's that's also for the men on the flip side is mm. also what makes them feel safe because they know they can't impregnate anyone. Mm-hmm. They don't have that that fear on their shoulders because I know for a fact that a lot of men actually deal with that. Um, that they want to, you know, be free with sexuality and open and stuff, but there's always that lingering fear of like, oh, but what if she's one of them women and there are these women, uh, honestly, that will cheat a guy into saying yeah i'm not taking the uh, i'm taking the pill i'm I'm all safe i have a you know a femidome inside like a, a female condom um you can't get me pregnant like you don't need to and then nine months later they knock on the door and they're like oh i had your baby and so they, no this is a real thing and and it, it, it is the flip side and so you know honoring that as well and and having the guys know, hey, yeah, no, this is off the table. You can't, you so can't they can make feel anyone safe. pregnant. Yeah. So they feel safe as well. Yeah, that's amazing. I think that's just really huge. Um, and it's definitely something that makes this party very, very equal, uh, equally honouring both sensibilities and very safe. Yeah, and also, as we said before, fluid sexuality. Mm-hmm. There's everyone's mixing with everyone in oh, all yeah. different <laughs> situations. I think maybe we forgot to talk about the bathtub, but we have a bathtub at the Club Collective. <laughs> How do you feel there were 1.4 people inside? <laughs> yeah, it's like the maximum we've had is four people, but oh they had to be God. very, what was it, like geometrically yeah. placed. <laughs> Tetris. <laughs> Tetris. <laughs> Tetris. I don't even know if they had space to do anything. They were just squished in like marshmallows. Oh, it was really I bet fun. I heard it was a lot of fun. <laughs> Apparently so. And we've had a lot of people mm-hmm. who have, um, not that this is also, this is, this is just a fun byproduct of the party is I've had multiple people actually meet here and become couples afterwards. Yeah. So a lot of people think like, oh, this is just you people and you guys are just free love and da, da, da. And yeah, it's no. like, wait, hold on. I, me as Brittany, mm. I, I know that my soulmate is out there and I'm so mm. excited to receive that person. Mm-hmm. And I'm also excited to play. You know, I feel like mm-hmm. the new paradigm is being in union with ourselves yeah. and then choosing union with someone else who's also in union with themselves. So yeah, being free exactly. and chosen at the same time. Yeah, exactly. And this is a really fun way to play all those things out. But we've had like a f- some friends who, some of my friends who met at the play party, they went hiking through Nepal together. Yeah. They had fun. And the last play party, we had two different people who became, a, they became a couple because of things that happened here at the play party. Like maybe oh, they had wow. known each other before, but they oh, hadn't okay. connected sexually or oh, romantically. Okay. And it just sparked things just and they happened. felt safe. And yes, okay. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't even know about this stuff until I went to Europe right after the play party, this one, the one I threw here last, and I heard about it through friends of friends, and I was like, those okay. people are dating? Oh my God. I know why. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so exciting. That so cool. yeah, I just wow, wanted to awesome. say say that out there also that, you know, Definitely. It's not a goal, but it's also like, yeah. hey, we're, we're all, yeah. we love love as well, yeah. you know? Like, we want to be free and chosen. Yeah, exactly. Like, chosen, free, yeah. in union with ourselves, and connected. I think that's, it's, it's touching on another point as well, which I think is super important to say, is that this, these play parties, they aren't just for singles. They, yes. We have so okay, many Okay, yeah, this coming. is good. That's a big one. Yeah, yeah, we have, we have so a lot many of couples. Cou- especially the last one, when you were in Koh Phangan, mm-hmm. there were a lot of couples present. And... I think um, that really brings in an entirely new um, thanks, an entirely new dynamic where you know these couples can not just start to explore their own their own individual boundaries and their own individual desires, but also, hey, what's it like to do this as a couple? Mm. How does this shift mm. our dynamic? How does this enrich our sex life? Mm. Um, I found I found that really really amazing and enriching to watch as well mm-hmm. um, from the outside and also to you know to come in as so, as a third person to the couple if mm-hmm. they were in, if they were uh, if they offered it as well 
um, because I had one play party where I was like, okay, I will only receive at this play party. That was my goal. Oh, to only nice. Because I'd always been initiating before. That was my job. You know what I mean? Yeah, In yeah. quotes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and so programming. Yeah, programming. And so my goal for that play party was to say no when I had a boundary and receive all other times. Amazing. And so there was a couple. There were two couples that came to me, and I was like, yes, okay, I want to. Um, I've been trying this, and so it was interesting to to be in that that part of their couple's dynamic mm-hmm. um, and see how that sits with me. And, you know, I think it's super important to mention that these parties are so valuable because you get to experiment and then you get to know what I like, what I don't like. Mm-hmm. How do I... It's an experiment. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's an experiment. And feeling more empowered and secure to then... Uh, take this out into Mm -hmm. the rest of your life and into your sex life and saying okay if a couple comes to me and they ask me out of out of a play party and they ask me to be part of it i'm like okay i need to know this and this and this about you to feel safe if these are yes i'm in i'm down i'm happy if these are a no mm, maybe not this time or maybe no just that's i didn't realize that that's amazing because you're basically saying you didn't know what you needed to know in order to feel comfortable yeah yeah so you know, for example, if it was a if it was a couple, um, actually had a gay couple, mm. um, not here but outside, mm-hmm. come up to me and was like, "Hey, we think you're really beautiful. Would you mm. actually want to experiment with the both of us?" It was two women. Two men. Two men. Two okay. men. Oh, interesting. I don't know. And I was like, "Well, I mean, fair enough, because yeah, yeah. you know they don't get to." No, I think it's play amazing. The same way with women, yeah, yeah, with each other. So fair enough. And um, and then something really interesting happened where I remembered th- a similar offer, but it was a, a guy and a girl um, from that play part, from one of the play parties mm-hmm. had come to me, and and there I felt super super safe because the guy had asked right off the bat, hey, um, uh, what what are you okay, what are you okay with, you know. What are you like uh, before? Like before we get into the, the closer discussions, like they'd made the offer. I'd, I'd said I was interested. I want to hear more about it. Before we get into the offer, please tell me your boundaries first. Amazing, right? And so that made me feel incredibly safe and heard. And then he actually listened very intently, and she mm, listened to mm. both of them listened very intently. That made me feel safe. And so these two gay guys, they came to me and. Uh, they both looked sweet but one of them went right in and he was like yeah would you want to do this because we want to try this and we want to try this and we want to so try they were this putting it on you so they were yeah so they were expressing their desires but they weren't actually coming in from a place of hey we like your vibe i want to hear how you feel about us first Mm-mm. before we enter into discussion mm-hmm. you know um and so it was a no for me in that mm. occasion, even though I'm super curious about what it's like to to experiment with two guys at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, also a fantasy of mine. But that was a no for me. And so just knowing as well what to ask for or what to look for, what in this situation I should or would like to pay attention to to feel safe, that was a really nice takeaway from these play parties. So there's so much to gain and there's so much to learn. Yeah. Super yeah, and valuable. I want to say that in the beginning when it comes to couples, we have a part of it where as part of the facilitated part, yeah. mm-hmm. it's like we just ask them to say like if if you are in a relationship and your partner's not mm-hmm. here, but you want people to know that you're in a relationship, like yeah. step into the middle. Yeah. And then people are, are invited if they want to to say any boundaries that they have mm-hmm. or just kind exactly, of like yeah. take up space in a good way of yeah. what they want they need and desire. And then if people are there with as a couple mm-hmm. to, to let people know and then uh, and then invite them to let people know how they want to play. Mm-hmm. So whether mm-hmm. some, some couples come and they say, we're a couple, mm-hmm. we want people to honor that. But mm-hmm. the best and the best way to honor that is tonight we want to play as individuals. We're yeah. just going to do our thing and exactly. explore. And, but, you know, if you see us, we are a couple. Yeah. And then other people are like this is our first time. We are yeah. very nervous. Yeah. You know, mostly it's the woman that's even more nervous than the man. And, you know, and the yeah. man's very protective over the women, like it's a, which is all beautiful, you know? Yeah. And, and so they just say like, they, they kind of <laughs> just like, take it slow, be gentle with yeah. us. Approach us slowly. Yes. And so, you know, it's, it's nice. Cause yeah. they're like, 
you know, maybe they just are like, we just want to watch and be in the energy of the, of the sexuality in the safe space. And so sometimes they'll just be like, you know, on the couch watching everyone and then making out with each other. And then one couple we had where they didn't really check in beforehand what their boundaries were. And so they ended up spending the whole party in one of the rooms talking about their own dynamic with each other and how they want and i was like that's this is what we're here for you know that's amazing because if the part if they weren't i think it was just basically like they needed to be completely in the face of the party for them to really talk about it Mm -hmm. um whereas other people are usually like have had that conversation before (laughs) they come this is how you know it's usually the thing i see normally is like um just come approach us together Mm -hmm. and you know just check in like you know honor gently do it gently um i had one experience with a a husband and wife who they had kids and it was like the first time the woman had really in it come oh yeah wait i think i know you don't yeah yeah. Yeah. we don't say names no names basically like it was just a really beautiful time because it was was the first time she experienced her own sexuality after having kids and they invited me to come and i had never played with a couple before wow and i was seeing a guy at the time who i had invited to the play party and so i invited him i asked them if it was okay and so the four of us and it ended up being like all three me and her husband and wow. my partner all pleasuring her until she orgasmed oh my and then God. she cried and like <gasps> hugged me and like i was we her and i were like oh straddling each other and it was just like her you know orgasming crying hugging me yeah, and like that's incredible. seriously to this day they're like that was like the best oh, thing ever you, Jesus, you know that's amazing so, and I'm like, this is what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah. I d- no, just my like, God, so you're many, so emotional. I know, it's there's so, so many stories. But no, but it's, yeah, yeah my guys, yeah, yeah. come on, it's endless. But it's, I think yeah. one more thing that I would really love to mention as well is, you know, the level of respect mm. that is built in these play parties and uh, respecting, like, the couple really acknowledging their own boundaries and asking people to respect these is mm. one thing but then also by stepping into the uh, into the circle and saying yes we are a couple um if you are a single person and for example you're you're on the outside world you're looking for love right and you feel attracted to the guy say in my perspective for example mm-hmm. if you're attracted to the guy from the couple but then he walks out and you understand oh they are a couple I don't want to be part of if if they're in an open relationship, for example, and mm-hmm. they're consensual to to inviting other people into their relationship outside of the play party. I I I'm not uh, comfortable in with being a third person in an open relationship. So I now have that information that mm-hmm. he is in a couple, um, and now I can make a, a self-respecting decision and say, mm-hmm. okay, well maybe. I don't want to get involved with them. I want to get involved with a single person where, for example, they might be potential to then go on a date outside mm-hmm. of the party. So, uh, and on the fl- I, it's funny because on the flip side, I'm actually the same with you. Like, I don't really want to be the third person. The third person yeah. I've done. I've experienced that. I really enjoyed it, and also it is complete. <laughs> the yeah. experiment is complete. <laughs> and what I realized is, inside a play party, I actually feel more comfortable playing with couples than oh, I would okay. outside because I know it doesn't it doesn't need it's to go gonna, anywhere. Yeah. Exactly. It's just like we're having fun, we're yeah. pleasuring yeah, yeah, each yeah. other. It's amazing. So it's funny yeah. how like not funny, but I love that everyone can have whatever experience they want yeah, from that. Exactly. I mean to you know, to be fair, like I think because of the the respect and the dynamic and the the night that we create here, um I've had a couple instances where, you know, um people would uh, guys that i'd played with in this organic ecstasy (laughs) that Mm we would created had approached me outside of a play party Mm -hmm. um through instagram or through whatsapp or whatever because they tracked you down they tracked me down no i mean i was doing that (laughs) (laughs) but you know at some point or like we meet again at the gym or something all in flow um and and they would approach me and they would ask me for a date and i was like well I was in an organic ecstasy. I was vibing with everyone, but I'm not actually attracted to you. Mm -hmm. Um, And what I find really beautiful is 
at that point then the level of respect that we'd built here and the the accepting of that gentle rejection it carries through Mm -hmm. out into the real world so so that you know i don't know if if they would take a rejection so gracefully from everyone else that hadn't been at a play party like this Mm -hmm. but from me they took it very gracefully because we would had the same experience Mm -hmm. and they knew the standard you know they knew the healthy standard so this is the tribe so this is the yeah there's so many men that i would play with at a play party and have part of my community be my tribe and and then dating them romantically is a very separate conversation it's a very separate conversation and just having now the having the the competency Mm -hmm. um to to say yes to say no to take rejection to give rejection gracefully and gently and kindly um that that is such a superpower mm. you know that is such a superpower and i think that is also a huge value that comes out of these parties definitely amazing well we are at an hour and a half oh my god <laughs> like we could just keep talking we could keep talking all night um but oh i think god. i think maybe end it on a high note yeah of that sounds good this is we're doing it again two weeks i'm not and then so another excited. one next month and then you know <gasps> It's been a whole year of these, oh and I'm so excited. Oh and we've taken international now to other countries, oh and I plan God. to do it next summer oh again gosh. in Europe. Oh my God. So, so many fun things coming. Um, wow. Is there any last things you want to say to anyone? Like anything, anything yeah, that feels I mean, valuable? Honestly, I think just um, to everyone, you know, whatever your background is whatever your sexual orientation is if if you're labeling yourself in any way um whatever your desires are whatever your maybe trauma even so whatever your story is um have t- have a little bit of courage and come and attend uh, a vanilla um because it really can change your life very very profoundly mm. Uh, this is not about you having an orgy with 20 different guys or you know this is not about about having this this you know frivolous frivolous night and and completely forgetting your boundaries and throwing all caution out the wind no this is exactly the opposite we are stepping into consciousness we are stepping into the body we're stepping into self-respect and self-love and and self-empowerment and I really believe in the value of this to to change your life extremely profoundly. Um, so if you have the chance, whether it's on Kofangan <laughs> or whether it's you know somewhere else in the world where we'll be doing these play parties, please have the mm-hmm. courage. Reach out to us even if you have questions. Like reach out, you know, ask your questions. Get curious about you. Get curious about your sexuality, about your boundaries, mm. about your programming, and see if we can start to 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 break this and to work and to work through it and to develop and and see how it really opens your life <laughs> you were so amazing <laughs> <laughs> i love you i love you too i don't have anything else to say i mean that was like <laughs> mic drop <laughs> damn <laughs> <laughs> okay right. yeah i love you so much I love thank you, you for too. being on my podcast thank you for having me it's been fun yeah we're sending everyone who's listening to this all the light and love from yes. our beautiful Copanyang Island. All of the good vibes. Mm. Have a beautiful day, you guys. Have Bye. Fun.